Hey guys, Richard here with High Caliber Carpentry. I want to go over some window measurements with you. In a recent video, I covered how we go and like just look at the anatomy of the window and understand what's behind each thing. Like, you know, we got our window stops here, we have our casing. Um, you know, this is a sash right here, the window piece that opens the upper and the lower. Sometimes this will be fixed on the top and you'll only be able to open. So that'd be a single hung. This here's a double hung unit that we're going to be messing with today. But a couple of pieces of uh, measuring devices that I have is a six foot tape and a 30 foot tape. And you can use both of them, but I'm going to show you the difference about what it looks like to measure with both of these. <clears throat> so one of the resources that we're going to be operating off of today is specifically Gel Gwen's packet for uh, their measurement guide and we'll just be going through a few steps that they outline. This won't be a huge in-depth video but I want to walk you through the process of what it looks like to be measuring gel wind windows. You know Pella has their own measurement guide and I'm sure that there's other uh, manufacturers out there as well who offer their own measurement guides but let's go ahead and get started on it. <clears throat> So it starts out by saying that the minimum, you need a minimum of a three and three H uh, jam width. And let me show you what that looks like. Let's go ahead and open up our windows. Okay, and so this is your jam right here. Like we said in the other video, this is your jam. And this is your window stop on the interior and your blind stop is on the outside. Now I know that these windows from us measuring them are the 36 inches, 36 inches wide by 46 inches tall. And I, I can look at that and know what that is. Uh, now let me explain to you what I'm doing right here. So what I've just done is, since I know these windows are wood windows, um, you know, these are the jams, the jam liners right here, the guides that help the sashes roll up and down. And I know that these are our window stops. So what I do is I place my tape inside to inside of these jam liners. <clears throat> and I can use this little small tape as well. Normally I would use this smaller uh, six foot tape for jams that uh, are really small and they, they're really for modern jams that have the the pieces that lock in from the top, so they have the, the toggle locks, the, the switches, or the, the slide, sliding locks, rather. And what happens then is they actually have a, a small groove to go into as compared to, you know, this inch and a quarter sash piece right here, um, as wide as the sash is. That's, what the, that's what's guiding that up and down. So, I hope I didn't confuse you right there. Overall, what that means is these wood windows are inch and quarter wide. That's how wide these jam liners are for them to go in. Newer windows have small circular dowels and rods that actually clip into the window through sliding mechanisms. That's why they're different. So that's why you would need a smaller tape if you have those. But I digress. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that in there really tight on this side and really tight on this side. And that comes out to 36 inches there right at it and it's kind of curved a little bit so if you're trying to get 36 and a 16th or 36 and an 8th don't worry about it just measure that and you're looking for an even measurement that should come out to an even measurement now keep in mind if you are seeing 35 and 7 eighths and you want to validate what's in behind these jam liners something that you can do is kind of wiggle the jam liner a little bit hopefully it won't break on you to see if there's anything back there, see if you can push it in. Sometimes you can feel if there's a foam strip back there, which normally there is, but it doesn't take up a whole lot of room. Generally, what we're talking about for behind these jam liners is an eighth of an inch from the point of measuring. So there's not a lot of tolerance uh, between that jam liner and the actual jam, the wood jam itself. All right, so we've got 36 inches here. And that's how it tells you to measure. It tells you to measure from there and then get a measurement up here and then up there again. 
Here's a good example of fitting this tape into tight spaces. As you can see up here, that's a tight space. But my, my tape fits in there nicely. On the other hand, I can take <clears throat> my tape measure down here and it fits in there okay. But if I try to go up here, it doesn't want to go. So I'm not going to get an accurate measure with that 30 foot tape. So I'm gonna use, you, what I'm going to use is a six foot tape. Go up in here, place it in that way. Try to fit it in there as much as possible. Squeeze it in there. So I wasn't able to squeeze my tape in there like I needed to, but it still came out. I can see that roughly measured 36 inches. I'm still gonna go off the measurements that I've got down here. One of the most important measurements I'm gonna make is when we measure diagonally. I'll get to that in a minute though. <clears throat> The next measurement that they call for you to get after width is the height of the window. Now the manufacturer calls for you to measure from behind the part of the bead, through the sashes, out from the bottom, and down to the middle of the seal. So essentially you're making a straight line if you're looking at the window from a profile perspective. But I'm going to show you on this window that that's physically impossible by going down here. And I can't go any farther than that. And what's happening is... The sashes, when they close, they have what's called a check rail on the bottom of this sash and a check rail on the top of this sash. And they interlock in that manner whenever they close, so that pro that provides a weather tight seal. And so the tape is getting caught on that lip right there. I'll show you as we go into the bottom and try to do the same thing. It's not letting me go because of the, uh, the tape's lip uh, when it's measuring. So, one thing I recommend doing is, you know, you can still use this tape, but I prefer to use the larger one because we're going to go from the top of the seal, the top of the seal, but behind the stool to the bottom of the jam header, a piece of wood that the sashes rest inside of. So this is the seal. I'm going to take my tape and go on the outside of that where the exterior part of the window is, measure straight up. And I can see that this window is a 46 inch window. And you know, I could go down here to the middle, but you know, it would come out to about the same thing. There's not much deflection in there. So that's how I know this window is a 36 by 46 window. Now the manufacturer also calls to measure, you know, once in the middle, then once on either side of that as well. We're still going to get 46 if we come out to that again. We're not being super precise here with getting down to the 16th um, or any farther than that because the next one that's really going to make a difference is how we measure diagonally and that's going to let us know if we're square. If we're square then the measurements we've already taken are going to be the solid ones. So let's go ahead and do that. So the thing to keep in mind when you're measuring these is to always always measure from the same side each time in the same way. So what I mean by that is you have the same orientation right here as you do when you measure from the other side. When I do that, I'm reading from the top of the tape, top of the tape, bottom of the tape, top of the tape. I orient because the numbers are oriented to where I can read them, so I consider this the top. Come down here and I get 56 and a half. Now, the same thing, I'm going to come from up here, the same place I did just a little bit ago, and now the top of the tape is the bottom of the numbers again. So the top of the tape is always pointing upwards. And again, I'm getting 56 and a half there. So that's good. For 1953 home, that isn't too shabby. Now, if they were to deflect, let's say, an uh, eighth of an inch, so if it was 56 and 5 eighths or 56 and 3 eighths, I wouldn't worry about it. That's still within the tolerance level that the manufacturer allows. But if you were to go any farther than that, that's when you would need to, to make arrangements to fix that kind of um, uh, off measurement. One thing I would suggest is, you know, instead of taking the measurement like what the manufacturer says and um, 
reducing it by that number off of the final width. So let's say you're, you're off a half inch at the top and you've got a 36 inch window, they're saying take that half inch and subtract it off of that 36 inches, which is your small split, and then you get 35 and a half inch. However, when we, talk, when we start talking about those kinds of measurements, we're getting into custom sizes and it may cost uh, more money. So what we're looking at doing in that case is, and what I suggest as a practical application is, you know, scoring a line behind your trim with a utility knife to separate your wall, your paint, your drywall from the trim itself that have fused together over time. And you're going to carefully separate it, making sure that you cut anything that, that the knife hasn't got already. Pull off the trim, get it to where you can see the framing and the window jam itself and you would then put you know make adjustments as necessary so push the window over to the left or the right sorry the the, you know, the left or the right and then you put shims in there to hold that in place get you a level you know at this point you would have the sashes out you'd have the jam liners out put your level against it make sure you got plumb or with that again within that eighth of inch tolerance put your shim shims in nail them in um and then at that point in time if everything's square with your diagonal measurements, put all your, uh, your window sashes in and your jam liners again to make sure everything works properly. It might even work better, who knows? But at the same time, it also might have been rubbing for so long that you induce a draft into the home because of an uneven wear on that window. So who knows what might happen whenever you fix that kind of thing, but that would be good for maybe if you're about to put the windows in. But uh, just some things to keep in mind as well. Again, this is not going to be super in-depth. So we, we, we've covered, you know, how to take the width of the window, how to take the height of the window, how to measure square, you know, some of the most important things, some practical applications, practical tips, and getting you some new windows. Um, you, you know, any kind of window that you get now is going to be technologically superior to the stuff that maybe you have in an old 1950s home. Even starting out on your lowest vinyl windows, the, you know, all the windows have the pros and cons, but you know, vinyl windows are gonna be probably your lowest cost windows for replacements and, or just new construction windows overall. And uh, those are gonna have some great performance ratings, as does the wood windows, aluminum clad, vinyl clad, uh, your composite windows now as well. All these windows have some great performance ratings. It's just really what you'd like to see in your own home. This is how you take some measurements and uh, really just follow the manufacturer's instructions whenever you get them. Again, we've been dealing with gel blend right here. And uh, that's that's what we've been going off of. And so if, if you're looking at putting a gel blend window in, that's how we do it. But if you're uh, looking at doing another one, uh, again, manufacturer's gonna dictate what happens. But taking up enough of your time right now, I appreciate you joining me on this and helping me with figuring out how big these windows are and I hope to uh, put, put an update to see how they look later and um, really I guess we're gonna get some grids in here and all that kind of stuff but thanks guys we'll talk to you later God bless you appreciate you joining me we'll see you soon